Looking ahead in, into 2011, Sam, you, know, you write about historically uh, the bull market, and, and when we look ahead to March, uh, the bull market's entering its third year. What does it mean historically? What does it mean in 2011? You, you've also said equities will be good, not great, in terms mm -hmm. of U.S. equities in 2011. The, uh, the third year of a president's term in office historically has been tremendous for stocks. Average increase of 17% since World War II. The market has never declined in the third year of a president's term in office since 1945. Uh, so there's no guarantee that it'll repeat this time around, but at least sets the tone. The reason is, I believe, that the president uh, or their party wants to stay in power. They're going to do what they can to stimulate the economy so that the voters are happy by the time they go back to the polls. I think that's going to be offset a little bit because of the age of this bull market. Mm -hmm. We're entering the third year. Historically, you know, we get a good growth, about 5% on average, outperforming small cap stocks. And usually we do see a gravitation more toward the defensive areas of consumer staples, energy, health care, and utilities. Uh, but that could be something that happens later in the year. So I think it will end up probably being a good year, but not a great year. And Liz, you described this recovery as sort of the, the square root scenario, the V and then leveling off. What part of that do we see in 2011? I actually think we're accelerating off of the flat part, and I do think we'll have another lift. I don't think we go into another V, uh, because I don't think the conditions suggest that we get there, uh, largely because of the debt problem. We, mm -hmm. we have such a massive debt um, overhang that isn't going away anytime soon, and when the public sector has to finance that much debt, it crowds out the ability for the private sector to grow. So it, I, It's been added to with the, with the tax compromise. Right. So now I think the next step here is true long-term spending cuts and, mm -hmm. and entitlement reform. I was very, very pleasantly surprised with, the, uh, with what came out of the Deficit Commission and even pleasantly surprised with the fact that, although didn't get the 14 votes, that there were 11. I served on uh, a presidential uh, commission in 2005, a tax reform commission. It was bipartisan. It is very hard to get anything powerful and bold when you have from one end of the sp uh, mm -hmm. political spectrum to the other. And I thought this was very, very bold. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to now see is, all right, we, we, we figured out the tax piece at least in the next two years. Now it's really time to tackle this long-term problem. And I think the public is saying to the world, to politicians, to leaders, to businesses, mm -hmm. you know what, the rubber is, uh, you know, it's time for the rubber to meet the road here. What about the biggest political risks, uh, Sam, for 2011? Uh, continued gridlock. Uh, I think that the polarization in Congress is worse today than it's ever been. Uh, I've actually done a study back to 1900 that says gridlock is not good. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and some argue it is good for the market. Well, they're wrong there, Pilgrim, <laughs> uh, because the data shows that basically the market does much better under a unified government. You know, the, the president issues something, Congress pretty much rubber stamps it, it stimulates economic growth, pushes up corporate earnings, raises uh, uh, price expectations. Mm -hmm. But with, with gridlock, um, basically nothing gets done. Uncertainty is the rule of the, of the uh, day. And I think what happens is Wall Street doesn't like the fact that Congress is not leading. It's, it just ends up impeding. Mm. Liz, you have said that the, the, the tax stimulus, if you will, from, from tax uh, break extensions are, are going to be more helpful in 2011 than people think. Well, I think it's not only the combination of the extension of the tax cuts, which have gotten built into expectations, yeah. but I think the, the switch from a tax credit to the 2% payroll deduction, as well as the full expensing, were not um, factors that I think a lot of people were anticipating. There was also um, a bit of an anticipation that even if all the, the, the cuts were extended, that that might not be the case on, on capital gains. Mm -hmm. So I think in told, the combined effect of this is a more powerful stimulant for the economy in the near term than what the consensus expectation was before we got this. And just looking at what the storyline will be for 2011, it's, it's hard to predict, especially in a situation like this. But, Sam, what will the storyline be? I think the storyline will be, uh, you know, sort of breathing a sigh of relief that we have... Um, been able to get through the year with an economy that's stronger than expected and possibly even a stock market that has surprised people to the upside. And Liz? I would, I would agree with that. I think, I think we're going to see finally that begrudging uh, consumer confidence um, pick up mm -hmm. to be a little bit more consistent with what has been improving investor confidence. And I, th I think it will be a year that is a relatively pleasant surprise, both in terms of the economy and the market. Cautiously optimistic from both of you. We'll take that going uh, into the holidays and into 2011. Liz Ann Saunders and Sam Stovall, thanks so much. Thank you. My pleasure.